It's time for the Madison Avenue. Wait, no, it's the new Madison Avenue show. Starring your favorite weirdo, Madison Avenue. Hi, I'm Madison Avenue. Welcome to the show. We got a very special guest. It's a cat. Yeah, believe it or not, a talking cat that does comedy on tour. He's been doing it for a while, and I'm sure you've seen him with some of the big ones. And uh, welcome to the show. How are you doing? Yeah, my name is Gino. Just one name. Cats only have just one name, like Madonna and Cher and Prince. So, uh, you know, what's up, Madison? Nice to be here. Glad I can be here. I've had a rough life. Yeah, that was kind of the premise. Uh, that's what your agent said, and uh, you want to spread the news about being uh, clean and sober. <laughs> I tried that for a while. And, yeah, that joke does work. I, I quit drinking and lost half my friends. Actually, it goes like this. I quit drinking and half my friends disappeared. My sponsor says the double vision just cleared up. That's a math joke. Well, it started out when I was a kitten. You were, you're in recovery, in rehab for sex addiction, alcoholism, drug addiction, is there anything left? What got you started using catnip and drinking and all that stuff? It all started with, you know, uh, catnip. <laughs> and I love catnip, especially the fresh stuff, the buds. That crap they sell at the pet store doesn't do a thing for me. I just walk through it. I piss on it. But one guy, Matt, got me freshly grown Perfectly dried catnip, and it was the best. I loved it. I just dove into the stuff, and he kept giving it to me. We we're good buddies. But uh, I hear you're a real ladies' man cat. And, you know, the ladies love me. You know, what can I say? I've got humongous balls. <laughs> and uh, I got an appetite for... Uh, sex like you wouldn't believe you know that uh matt you're talking about matt mccourt right you know he's my brother right why well, we're from the same mother with two different fathers my my father was from new york and i uh grew up out there with him and worked at cbs and then uh decided to come out here to visit my mom and you know Matt lived at the house, and so we've been uh, hanging out together since 1993 here. I was on his TV show a lot. I had, yeah, he, I had a band with him. You know, Matt's a good guy. But life didn't start out, you know, so well for me. You know, people think they want to have a, a cat, and they don't realize, you know, we're killers. We're terrorists. We hunt. We love to hunt. They buy you because you're cute. I mean, look at me. I'm fucking gorgeous, man. So they buy it. You know, they think they own you, but we actually own them. And then they get mad when you act like a cat for crying out loud. What's the deal? So these people didn't like me being how I am, and they left me when they moved out. So I used to prowl the neighborhood until this nice people came in and said, you know, we'll take you in. And uh, they adopted me out. Now my life is pretty good. So you have a, a pretty rough childhood, right? Uh, or kittenhood, what do you call it? <laughs> I've never, ever interviewed a talking cat before. I had a dog that sings. I think you guys are friends. You know, his stage name was Bear, but his real name was Sparkles. But uh, so they left you behind over in southeast Portland. And uh, this table is so hard got on my balls. I need to go lay did down. Did they ad adopt you or something? Or what's going on now? On stage, I play a long haired, well hung rock star, a real lady killer. 
But in real life, I'm a short, fat, balding, impotent 40-year-old guy. Everybody at the lumber mill makes fun of me. Why, I couldn't even get a date before I joined Dream Club USA. But now I'm living the life of a playboy. I'm a full-blown alcoholic, and I've even contracted BD four times. So if you don't like who you are, why don't you give the number a call that's on the screen right now? It can make somebody out of you. It can make your dreams come true like it did for me. Dream Club USA. Be the man you always wanted to be. Yeah, this is much better. Hey, you got any treats? I love treats. I like the sweet ones. These people around here give me, you know, these organic health food stuff. I want some, I want some good shit, man. You know, I'm a cat of leisure. I've been on all the talk shows, Jimmy Cattle, Kid Carson, all the big ones. People ask me for my autograph, I give them a paw. You know, it's tough being famous, but what the hell? That's my life. So, you comfortable now? All right. And, uh, what's going on next? By the way, you are uh, an amazing looking cat. A very fine specimen, if I might say that, if you don't mind. <laughs> So, uh, have you been on any of the other talk shows? I heard you're going on tour pretty soon, so that's uh, what you're doing the press for, I've too, been aren't you? on bills with, uh, you know, shows. That's what they call shows. You're on the bill. You're on the marquee with uh, Bert Kreischer, Tom Segura, Christina P., Brad Williams, all the big ones. I turned down a Netflix special. They weren't paying me enough. I wanted 10 cans of great cat food. They were only going to give me five. I said, fuck you. Yeah, fame isn't what it's cracked up to be. You know, I was hanging out with Ace Fraley a couple of years ago, and people recognize him because he doesn't wear makeup, but that guy's a hoot. Yeah, my handlers take pretty good care of me. Not like Anthony Jeselnik's dog. Nobody's going to make me star. I'll eat the curtains before that happens. So, uh, tell me about you, Madison. Where are you from? You seem like a nice guy. How'd you get in this business? You got a Netflix special and you turned it down because of cat food? For crying out loud, they won't give me one. I've got an upcoming role in a movie where I play a cat on the prowl. That's, you know, what a stretch, right? And, uh, it paid pretty good, but I'm in the big time now, so I'm flying on private jets, no carrier, uh, I'm my own man, I've got ladies left and right and center, and uh, I'm loving the life, actually, so thank all of you for that. Well, I saw, I've, I've seen Burt Kreischer, he's great, and his movie, The Machine, is funny as hell, and it's got Luke Skywalker from Star Wars, you know, I couldn't believe it. Great story, and man, what a funny guy, I, I love those guys, Tom and Burt. Yeah, I got into this business because of a friend of mine, this dog named Sparkles, he said, You've got a lot of personality, man. Why don't you be a, come on stage with me. So I went on stage. I upstaged him. He ended up eating himself to death. And uh, I got all the good gigs. He was a great friend of mine. I feel bad about that. But, you know, shit happens. Well, like I said, I'm from Red Hook, New York. And uh, my dad worked at CBS, so he got me a job there for a while. But uh, I decided to move out here. I've been doing stand-up comedy for, uh, since the 90s. And came out here and was on Matt's TV show. In fact, he called it the Madison Amity Show, like today. And it was pretty fun. Uh, I worked as a gopher at CBS in New York. And I don't know. That's pretty much my life. I've been, you know, was kind of funny. I grew up, didn't have my mom around all the time, so uh, 
I love Herb Alpert. And my my first concert I went to was Herb Alpert and the two went on brass. And I saw Buddy Hackett as the opener, and that just stuck with me. A funny guy. Buddy Hackett, you know him? Anyway, he's... Uh, I don't know if he's still alive, but, uh, you know, it's on YouTube. Everything is on YouTube. This is for you. This is the cookie song. Tired of feeding that animal day after day and then having to smell those icky, smelly cans. Well, here's Wonder Wolf to the rescue. The responsibility-free pet that you can own and cherish for years to come. Utilizing a real live timber wolf, it's caught in action pose that will give you hours of satisfaction. Great with kids. Don't forget Wonder Wolf when you're looking for that responsibility-free pet. Absolutely nothing to buy and it will never die on you. Wonder Wolf, the pet you don't have to. Order by midnight tonight. It's a fucking sin what people do to cats. I've lost 316 friends in the last two years because people just don't want them around anymore. They get them, and they think they're cute, and their friends come over and say, Oh, isn't he cute? Oh, what a nice little kitty. And they want you to act like a fucking pillow. Man, I'm a killer. I got to hunt birds. I got to find Rats, I gotta kill the mice, I'm active, I gotta beat your legs, I gotta tear up the carpet, tear up the curtains, what the fuck do you want? That's why this lifestyle touring is the best thing for me, because I can totally tear up a hotel room, leave, nothing happens to me. What are they gonna do? But uh, here I am, I've had my... Time to with drugs and alcohol and women, just like you, but uh, probably a little different. <laughs> so what's next? What was really funny is calling a Lyft or an Uber and having them pick us up. And when we get in the car and tell them where we want to go, one guy shit his pants. Literally. He had to get out. He couldn't believe it. He kicked us out of the car. So I called, and uh, I called a cab. They didn't care. Cab drivers do anything. They got us anything we wanted, too. You know what I mean? Yeah, that was some good stuff. We were going, We were up for days. Oh, yeah, Sparkles. He was a great guy. We had so much fun together, running around the neighborhood, and uh, he would just... Crack me up. You know, he sang on your album. You didn't realize that we were going out having a good time behind your back, but you both lived at different places. He had a nice downtown apartment overlooking the Willamette River. How did you get your start in show business? I mean, did you go to open mics or what happened? Yeah, I got into this business because of a friend of mine, this dog named Sparkles. He said... You've got a lot of personality, man. Why don't you be a, come on stage with me. So I went on stage. I upstaged him. He ended up eating himself to death. And uh, I got all the good gigs. Yeah, Sparkles was a great guy. He, uh, he like I said, he, uh, Matt had him sing on my album. <laughs> my first album is called Madison Avenue's Greatest Hits, Volume 2. <laughs> but uh, we did the cookie song. Yeah, his uh, stage name was Bear because he looked like a little bear. And uh, he, uh, he was pretty cool. The ladies loved him, too. I would walk him at night between sessions. It would be about 11 o'clock at night. And we went around by this tavern called the Penguin Tavern over in southeast Portland. And... They let underage girls in all the time. And one night, night, hot summer night, he uh, goes there. He liked to go. They had karaoke with really bad singers. And he just liked to go there because all the ladies would come out and pet him. And one night, this girl came out. She's moved her falling out of her dress. And she's drunk as hell. And she said, oh, my God, he's so cute. 
what kind of dog is he? I said, that's not a dog. That's a pig. I got him from South America. And he was super cool. But, uh, you know, I can't replace it, but I'll be the best I can. You know, I'm, I'm thinking about going next door and robbing the next door for some treats because they give them those fast food treats, the good kind, not these organic health food shit. Organic, what, I got stuck with some hippies. That was a fun time with him. I miss him, too. And uh, the next record I do is definitely going to be, you know, boring without that little guy. So, DeBear, we love you. Sparkles, you are a great friend and uh, a great singer, actually. A bark-up singer. So tell me more. <laughs> but, hey, you got the life. They always say cats don't do anything. They don't have a job, but I guess you're a different guy. You are the G, the original gangster. What's coming up? Okay, Madison, I'm here to promote my tour. So the first leg is Whiskers in Cincinnati. Cincy, they call it that because it's sin. Then I go to the Long Dog Arena in Detroit. Nipsey's in Chicago, Illinois, the Les Paul Litter Box in Waukesha, Wisconsin, Meowsers in Green Bay, Wisconsin, Barkies in Detroit, the Sand Trap in Arkansas, Little Rock, Pouncers out there in Johnson City, Tennessee, Rednecks in Nashville. Then I end this strip with the uh, the flea trap in Austin, Texas, and I come home for a while. This sounds like it's going to wear you out anyway, so uh, good luck to that, and hopefully everybody, if you're watching, I'll put the tour dates up on the website, and uh, I guarantee you'll never see anything like uh, Gino G Show. He's amazing and funny as hell. It's going to wear me out. But uh, that's what I do. So uh, I look forward to seeing all of you on the road. Bring some treats and bring something else. You know what I mean? You know, you know what I like. So thanks for having me on, Madison. I'll be back. We'll do this again. You're a good guy and you're funny. I use your joke. I quit drinking. I lost half my friends. Okay, I'll see you later. Thanks for coming on the show. It's uh, great to actually meet you in person. And I'm sure a lot of people out there won't believe a, a talking cat, especially one that can memorize lines. But uh, you're amazing, and I think the world needs to see more of you. And best of luck, and thank you for being on the Madison Avenue Show. And we will end this with a... <laughs> a little kazoo. That's, uh, you know, my trademark. So uh, thank you very much. You know, let's have a big round of applause. And uh, his his website will be up. And you can check him out there and uh, hopefully see him on tour. Thank you very much for coming on the show. And you're right. You have gigantic balls. <laughs> Avenue. The new Madison Avenue show. Check usmetal.com for cable listings in your area or click on the YouTube link. And please subscribe.